You know how the iPhone 15 now comes with a customizable action button? Letting you do a few extra actions than just toggling between ring or silent. Well, on Android, you can also get something similar by downloading MacroDroid. You see, whenever you long press the power button, the voice assistant is what usually pops up. But with MacroDroid, you can remap the long press to have it do something else, even doing actions that Apple doesn't support. For example, not only can I do basic stuff like launching any app, opening the camera, or toggling the flashlight, but I can also do things that you wouldn't even think of, like opening your favorite website, launching the last photo you took, having the phone say the current time out loud, 12.07 p.m. Fill the clipboard with any text that I preset, like an address. Start voice recording in the background. I mean, the list goes on and on. Plus, you can even have it launch multiple actions simultaneously. Towards the end of the video, I'll even show you how you can get it up and running. The next cool feature that comes with the iPhone 15 is contact posters. It was first introduced in iOS 17, so pretty much any iPhone running this latest update can also have it. And if you don't know what it does, it basically lets you customize your call background. The same one that shows up on your friend's phone whenever you try to reach them. You can choose your own photo, font, or even hide behind an emoji. Unfortunately, on Android, there's no way to update your call background on someone else's phone. However, you can customize the call background for each of your contacts on your device. On Samsung phones, you can do this natively by going into the Contacts app, selecting the contact, tapping more, edit call background, background, hitting the plus icon, and then selecting any photo or video you like to use. Or you can choose to make a video with an AR emoji that looks just like them, even adding cool looking backgrounds with the AR emoji dancing around. For most other Androids, you unfortunately can't do this without downloading an app first, but there are some great options out there, and Android makes it really easy to change your default phone app, so it works really seamlessly, just like a system app. My favorite choice is Jolt, because it's free on the Play Store and it's super customizable. Not only does it let you assign custom call backgrounds to any of your contacts, but it even lets you choose videos. On top of that, I can even customize the answering style, the button layout, and a lot more. It takes it way further than what even Apple provides. The iPhone 15 also comes with standby mode, another feature introduced in iOS 17, and all it does is let you have a clock style dock whenever you turn your iPhone on its side while it's charging. You can even swipe on it to see your past photo memories and some other iOS widgets. On Android, some phones like the Google Pixels have something similar that only works with the proprietary Pixel stand, but it definitely doesn't have the clock style look. It's also not a native Android feature, so most Androids don't have it. Luckily, there is a very well-made app called Standby Mode Pro, and it looks exactly like Standby Mode on the iPhones. Once you start charging, you're greeted by a beautiful looking clock, which you can change by scrolling up on it. From there, if you scroll to the right, you'll get a slideshow of your photos. Then if you swipe again, you'll see the weather, then your music player, and finally, your calendar events. If you scroll all the way to the left, you even get a duo page that lets you have your clock on one side and all the same widgets on the other. Unfortunately, some are locked behind an in-app purchase, but I did just drop 50 promo codes to unlock every feature found within this app on my Patreon page. If you join, you can also unlock our latest set of walls and widgets. We actually just released these Pixel 8 style wallpapers, which I think look great on the home screen, we even made them available for smartphones, foldable phones, and even laptops. So make sure to join to get all that. Now within Apple's events, they also announced their new Apple Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2, and with them came a new double tap gesture that is pretty convenient. The way it works is whenever you tap your index finger and thumb twice, the watch will interact with the primary button in an app or with whatever is happening. Like it'll let you stop a timer, play or pause the music, snooze an alarm, and much more, just by pinching your fingers. Well, if you have one of the latest Samsung Galaxy watches running One UI Watch 5, you probably already have something similar under a different name. And aside from pinching, you can even do extra gestures like shaking your wrist or making a fist to do extra stuff. I can make a fist to open the apps, pinch my thumb and index finger to switch to the next item, 
double pinch to select, and then make a double fist to go back. These are all customizable too. I won't lie though, it doesn't seem to be as seamless as how it works on the Apple Watch. Plus it even leaves you with an ugly yellow ring on the outside if you enable it. But if you still don't mind, you can enable it by going into the settings, accessibility, tapping interaction and dexterity, then universal gesture and toggling it on. For any other Android smartwatches, you unfortunately can't do any pinch gestures that I know of. Now there's no denying that virtual reality is the future, but why can't we just get to the part where we don't have to wear humongous headsets that make us look like Cyclops and use something a little bit more stylish and discreet? Well, those next-gen XR glasses become a reality with the Bitcher One, the sponsor of this video. Not only do they look like regular sunglasses, but they also connect to your phone to let you catch a movie, browse the web, scroll through your social feeds, and even play your favorite video games on the big screen while you're out and about. The best part is that it supports many different devices, including iPhones, Androids, laptops, and even game consoles, handheld or stationary. Hell, it even connects with the newest iPhone 15s. Plus, I can take things even further by using Bitcher's Spacewalker app to let me have an entire workstation with several floating windows side by side right in front of your eyes. It seriously makes you feel like you're Tony Stark. The glasses also come with a built-in speaker that was in collaboration with Harman, bringing your favorite tunes, calls, and more right to your ears at an amazing quality. It's even got buttons on the side to let you adjust the volume, brightness, or even the tint of the lenses from dark to clear since they're made out of an electrochromic film. It's really mind-boggling when you see it in action. Just make sure you pick up Bitcher's XR glasses. Or if you have the older iPhone 14s or any older iPhones, pick the iPhone pack that includes adapters to have it working properly. So if you like to step in the world of extended reality with style, check out the Bitcher One XR glasses through the top link in the description. Okay, back to the iPhone 15. There's now a new iOS 17 feature that lets you check in with your loved ones within iMessage to let them know that you made it home safely. That way, if God forbids anything happens to you and you're not moving any closer to your destination, your iPhone will check in to see if you're okay. If you don't respond, your location will be shared along with your battery level and cell service status. It's honestly a life-saving feature and you can get something similar on your Android. Maybe the feature won't be found within your messaging app, but it can be found within another app that came pre-installed on your phone. It's called Safety, and within it is a feature called Safety Check. So whenever you're walking alone, taking an Uber, or anything else, you can set a timer, choose your emergency contacts, and start the timer. Once the time is up, your phone will check to see if you're okay, and if you don't confirm within a minute, your location will be shared with your emergency contacts. Sure, it's not as practical or as powerful as Apple's check-in feature, but it's better than nothing. And since I already mentioned iMessage, the latest iOS update now lets you transcribe voice messages to respond to them without hearing them. Well, Android devices have had this feature within the Google Messages app for a while. You just need to ensure this voice message transcription toggle is enabled within the Google Messages settings. The iPhone 15 also comes with a new feature called Name Drop, and it's really cool because it lets you put the phone next to any other iPhone running iOS 17, and then your contact information gets instantly shared with the other person. Well, on the Android side, we have something similar called Android Beam. Or, we did have it. Let's move on, I don't want to talk about it. Live voicemail on iOS 17 is a big one. Whenever someone calls and leaves you a message, you'll see a transcription in real time as they speak. And if you decide that you'd like to answer them after reading what they're saying, you can do that. Most Android phones don't support this, but those that do take it above and beyond. Like on the Google Pixels, they have a similar feature famously known as Screen Call. It lets you see a live transcription of what the person is saying without even answering and you can choose from certain phrases to have the Google Assistant say them out loud to the caller. Or on the latest Samsung phones, you can even write whatever you'd like to have Bixby talk for you. Now, if you don't own a Samsung or Google device, but would still like to replicate this screen calling feature, then you can download contacts from the Play Store to get it. The way it works is you decline any call you don't want to answer, and then contacts takes it from there. 
asking the caller what their name is and why they're calling. You can even follow along. If you decide that you do want to talk to the person after reading what they've said, then you can hit accept and it'll connect you. It's that easy. The only catch is that it only supports certain countries like the United States, Canada, and Austria. So I'm sorry if you don't live there, but hopefully I still help some of you out. Anyways, those are most of the major iPhone 15 features that you can bring over to your Android. I also made this same type of video for the iPhone 14, where I showed off certain ways to get that dynamic island, customizable lock screen, and a ton more iOS features over on your Android. So if you'd like to watch that, I'll leave it in the cards or within the end screen of this video. For now, let me show you how to enable that action button on your Android by using the MacroDroid app. First, hop into the system settings, and search Digital Assistant app. Tap the first menu and change your current digital assistant, which is most likely Google, to MacroDroid. This will allow MacroDroid to remap the power button to any action whenever you long press it. Then open MacroDroid, and if you're opening it for the first time, you'll be greeted with an intro, so skip that with the button to the left. Then tap Add Macro, tap the plus icon within the red triggers card, Search up Home, and tap on the only button that says Home Button Long Press. From there, tap on the plus icon within the blue Actions card, and here you can choose any action that you'd like to be launched whenever you long press the power key. Hell, it even lets you do multiple actions. Also, just a heads up, some activities may require you to grant them extra permissions, and some only work with Root. Still, a ton don't require Roots or ADB, so you should be good. From there, if you like to add a constraint, meaning that the action gets blocked within certain conditions, like when you reach specific locations, or your battery is low, or anything else, you can do that. Finally, give the macro a name, and then tap on the button in the lower right corner. Now you can long press your power button and the action should be launched. Either way, that's it for this video. If you found it to be useful, all I ask is that you please drop a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel, even if it doesn't seem like it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!